Today's job, Mrs. Jorgensen's house. Interesting property. At one time, her grandfather owned 51 acres in prime real estate in Saratoga, and it has slowly dissolved down to just over three acres, and sadly, Mrs. Jorgensen passed away, but we're doing one last job for the Jorgensen family. Um, unfortunately, there's a whole bunch of really dead pines on this property. One by one, the pines are in terrible trouble, especially the Monterey pines. But now more and more, we're seeing a lot of the Canary Island pines being infested by these different beetles. There's the Western pine beetle, there's the, the Ips pine beetle, there's the Sequoia pitch moth. You know, and all these beetles are transmitting a pitch canker disease, which is taking the trees out. So, pines, I'm not a big fan of pines. You know, there's some that are less susceptible, like the stone pines, they seem to be less susceptible to the, the beetle infestation. But uh, man, as soon as uh, all the Monterey pines are gone, those beetles are still here, they're gonna move on to the next, their next favorite in line. So let's go check out what we're doing at the Jorgensen property. May she rest in peace. Well, let's go back to the beginning before we did any work and I'm going out here looking at the initial bid and inspection of all these trees. And I think I'm going to title this one, The Problem with Pines. Now, there are some pines that are highly susceptible to insect attacks and every area has different species of pines that are affected differently. I mean, there, up north there are pine forests that are just devastated, just whole forests up in Oregon, Washington, Northern California, Canada. I mean, there's whole areas that, you know, you look out and the whole forest is dead and dying. Well, in the urban environment, there are a lot of species of pine, and I can talk about each of these individual species. This one is the uh, Pinus radiata, the Monterey pine. And it's a, it was a very popular pine planted here in the Bay Area in parts of California. And back in the early 60s, Sunset Magazine came out with an article touting the Monterey Pine as a wonder tree. And one of the garden centers had a big sale on little seedlings of Monterey Pines for 99 cents. I know that because I've heard this story many, many times. Well, since the influx of the beetles and the insects and the problems, the pitch canker and all the diseases, these trees are at the top of the list, I guess they're the most wanted list by the insects. And on this particular property, which is a, a significant property, it's, it's over three acres, there are many dead and dying pine trees. Well, this particular job that, I'll get to the job after I talk about the pines here first. You know, I, I've got some great footage, so hold on if you're just getting into this video. Uh, the last half has some really exciting uh, action stuff. But let's talk about the pines. Here's an interesting spot. This is a pine we cut down about 10 years ago and a sprout is coming up. I doubt from the roots they don't. It was probably a cone. The stumps on most species of pines decay quickly. And I usually, unless people want to do something with the area, I usually tell people just let it go away on its own naturally. Because a lot of stumps will sit around for decades, and pine stumps, um, they, they go back into the soil pretty quickly. The surface is hard, but underneath, you know, if I was to grind out this big stump, it would go just like that, really, really fast. So walking along the back of the property here, there was a big row, and we've taken out so many giant pines over the years. There is yet another big pine. She's got about four or five different varieties of pine tree on the property. And these dead ones were almost all Monterey pines. There's the next job that we've got to get to. That's at the end of this video. Um, I was working on this job. Uh, they gave us four days to do as much as we can in four days. And there was five big dead pine trees, so we took out the four of the most hazardous ones. That last huge one in the back, uh, it, it actually still had some green needles on it. So while it was a huge tree, we picked out the ones that looked like they were ready to fall. You can see that one's already dropping branches. 
Look at how rotten it is. Now the thing about a dead tree, especially a pine, is when they reach a point where they've been dead for so long, and a lot of these trees have been dead for two years or more, and you can see the, the fungus growth, there's these little pustules, these little balls, you can see the powder at the base. There's lots of insect frass that is different in these types of pines that shows you the extent of the damage. That one's not so bad yet. You still, it still has needles hanging on it. But this one, oh, this one's ready to fall down. Uh, you know, it's, it, it was a real, real hazard. So we opted to get the most hazardous one. They'll have us back to get this one, but we, we didn't have time for this job. Now this is interesting. Look at all the, the big holes of the woodpeckers that are going after some of these bark beetles and insects that are under the bark. So they're hammering this tree pretty good, but it's still got a lot of green in it. The, the wood is still wet. So we can, we can wait on this one. I told them within six months they should get that one out of here. This is yet another variety of pine which is much more resistant to the insects. This is the Italian stone pine. And there are a few monster stone pines in, in our area. Well, let's get back to the job. We got a sketchy movie. Um, I showed some of this footage last week. Uh, way, some of the action shots. I'll just get this one for a little while. This is kind of fun. Man, that could not have been better. Get on to day three and four of the same job. There's two more large dead pine trees there that we've got to deal with. Actually, there was three. Yeah, I didn't get any of the video of day number three, uh, but day number four we had this leaner, which was kind of interesting. The uh, the difficulty with the leaner is it was so dead. It, that's not the leaner. That's a, uh, a Canary Island uh, pine. And it also is riddled with bugs. Oops. But this leaner right here, you can see the base of the tree, it, the bark is just peeling off so bad. When we were up there with a the bucket and doing the, the limb removal, the base of the tree was rocking like it was about ready to break and come out of the ground. So we knew we had to get in here and get this one down, but I wasn't about to climb it. It was beyond the height of the bucket. So we did some creative rope work. You see the, the Jorge and Kalen are in the background there. What we did is we rigged up the Canary Island pine. And we've got it set up so that when they pulled on it, it would pull the this tree over to the right to avoid hitting that big black acacia there. And there was one sacrificial tree. It was a small walnut down there that was rotted at the base. And they got an okay from the owner to smash the walnut it had to go anyway so we were able to wedge the tree i made the wedge cut well i'll just let you watch from here on out Pay attention to the guys pulling on the rope in the background. We were able to pull it over considerably. You see? That was great. I thought you were going to hit the rope for the fence. Yeah. I wasn't able okay. to do it just with the, the wedge. Dead wood behaves differently okay. than, than live tissue. Live tissue will bend <laughs> over, <laughs> where right dead okay. tissue just cracks and fractures. So. Wow, um, you, you can start the control, cut. but you lose a lot of control. That's kind of fun.
see? That worked great. I thought you was going to hit the <laughs> before the fence.